um, you, you always talk about the missed layups, missed shots at the rim, turning into something for the other team. In the first quarter, I think they were, they were four of 11 in the restricted area. How did you kind of see your rim protection and, yeah. and how did that play into? I thought that got us out in transition. I mean, anytime you see, when you don't get out in transition, transition it's because you don't get stops and um, you're taking the ball out of the net or you're not uh, forcing difficult shots to where you can get there. So I thought we did a good job um, defending the paint. Uh, I think they got some good looks in the first quarter and the first quarter and a half that I think go down. The game's a little bit different. Uh, they missed some open threes. Um, but we defended the paint well, and we were able to get out and transition. And you call a timeout. It's like three minutes to go or so. I, mean, I don't know if that was just your mandatory or whatever in the second quarter. But they had made a run. They'd actually gone on like an 11-3 run. You guys kind of responded out there. Did you see like in that moment like – this might have been a time where you were getting a little sloppy and you need to kind of reorganize. Uh, it was our mandatory. I felt like the game was going on long and there was multiple uh, transition opportunities. Uh, a couple of missed layups. I um, didn't love some things, but I, I, I thought we were at least fighting for great shots. I can't remember exactly, but I thought it was an opportunity for us to regroup, run a set. Um, I have no idea what happened after that. But Did we? Oh, look at that. Call more timeouts. Joe, forcing 18 turnovers tonight. You were able to force some turnovers late in that Thunder game, too. You've talked this year about how you can't necessarily yeah. force the other team to give it up. But how, have you found ways in you know the last you know couple of games here to kind of ramp up the forced turnovers? I, mean, I think the OKC game was more out of uh, desperation because we were losing. And I think we picked up our ball pressure and our activity naturally. Um, I think that, and then tonight, I thought our ball pressure and activity, because of their off-ball movement, it forced us to stay engaged, forced us to uh, play more physical, so to speak. And I thought it was tonight's game was about like take away their speed with our physicality and our off ball defense. And I thought we did that. And I think when you take away their off ball and their speed, um, they're forced to make plays. And I thought our shift activity was good. In terms of the defense, you know, what you guys have built here, you know, Will was talking before the game, the system you guys were building with Eme that year kind of built on some stuff Brad did the year before. And I'm sure this year you've built on some stuff you've done in previous years. How has the defensive unit and the defensive identity here kind of evolved, as you mentioned? Yeah, I think that's, a, uh, Will, that's exactly kind of how it went. I think, you know, the team played, had a system when Brad was here, and it was a, uh, a very, it was a rules-based system where it was, um, there was an answer for everything. You guard everything the exact same way. Um, and very fortunate that we were able to see that system. And then when Will and, you know, Ime were here, it was a little bit more switching. But we, we got really good at switching because we had the defensive principles that the team had when they were under Brad. And then we were able to kind of do some different things that if you don't have principles and technique, you're not able to pull off. And so then I think because of that foundation, we were able to, you know, recreate with our switching and whatnot. And then, you know, like I said, fortunate to have both of those systems to be able to do some stuff differently. And I still think we can grow and get better defensively to, you know, to try and force more turn turnovers to try and just, um, you know, be better, whether it's uh, a little bit more unique. You know, we played a little bit of zone tonight. Um, and then just continuing to, to, to grow. Joe. Before the game, Will was asked what makes your defense so good, and he said it was your offense. I feel like that's kind of the ideal answer for you. It's a beautiful what, answer. Yeah, he went into how, like, you guys, the way you execute on offense, the way you emphasize transition, it makes it just hard to even score against you. So how do you feel like this whole season and – Really tonight has represented the way. Such a beautiful answer. <laughs> the way your team has so beautifully ad you know, adopted the identity of kind of looking at the whole yeah. game as symbiotic. No, I mean, I think it's just looking at the, so many people look at the game and they look at, OK, this is what happened uh, in transition. Or like, uh, you know, when, when you give up something at the rim, there's like three reasons as to why it got to that point, right? It could be the wrong matchup. It could be the wrong body position. It could be anything. And so it's like you got to take it two, three steps back for each. and. The game's just connected there, and so your defense starts with your offense because if you take great shots and you're well spaced and you crash through the nail and you get guys stuck out of the corner, it's five on five, um, and you're, you have five guys behind the line of the ball, and then you can get matched. And then, you know, your offense starts with your defense. If you get stops and protect the rim and force the right guys to shoot contested shots, then you can get out and run. And so, um, I think we've grown really this this year at seeing the connectivity between how the game is played, and uh, everything is a is a product of something else. And so. Uh, we just have to continue to understand that and fight to keep those habits on both ends. So last time in the Salt Lake City, Will threw zones at you. They trapped Jason. I think he had like a season low in shot attempts. They they did all types of stuff because obviously Will knows your roster. How did you guys adjust that? Because obviously they did the same things that you guys kind of sliced through. Them. What did you do differently this time to kind of overcome those funky defenses that he knows to yeah. stop? Um, I, I, we didn't lose rhythm. 
Um, and so I think obviously the, the roster being a little bit different, we have different strengths than we had before. And so we're able to, uh, you know, play a little bit faster or with KP's presence in the paint, we're able to get the ball in the middle of the paint. And that doesn't uh, negate um, Walker Kessler, but it, it, it kind of, you know, he's not as effective when KP's out there. So I think just um, all of us making plays, getting out in transition, I think JT's ability to play patient versus that and see the two on ones. Um, I think Jalen's ability to play fast. I think Derek and Drew, you saw them be aggressive uh, with catch and shoot shots, driving to the paint, uh, and then just constant movement. So I was pleased with the way we handled the. It didn't change our rhythm. How much of a difference does KP make in when when teams play you zone? Because they're you're probably going to see a lot of zone yeah. just to mess with you guys. Well, the... you, know, you take like the last two games where um, in the OKC game, KP was in the middle against the zone because um, you know Chet was somewhere else, or it was it would bring Chet close away from the basket. But tonight it was KP in the dunker, JT or JB in the middle, and so to either they shoot that or. Um, you know, he has to stay connected to KP because of the big. And so I think it's just goes back to what we've been talking about is each guy has a positive effect on the next guy for that reason. And each guy is good because of the guy next to them. Uh, hey, Joe. Uh, Jason set his season nine free throws tonight, even though he only played through three quarters. Uh, how have you seen him sort of transform from last season where he was usually you know, the go-to score versus this year, even through some some tough shooting nights as of late, the assist numbers still up, sort of transforming into the offensive hub for the team? Um, just being patient, slowing down, taking what the defense gives him, reading the defense, understanding uh, how everybody around him uh, is, we're a better team when everyone is a, is a threat. And he can be a better player when he uses everybody around him and actually makes his job easier. And so you kind of saw that tonight with his ability to ke get more catch and shoot opportunities, uh, his ability to get to the free throw line. Um, and that's kind of what the guys are recognizing is then the guy next to you is going to make your job easier. That's why um, we're a good team and we can continue to trust that. We continue to grow as a team and uh, he's being patient in his reads and uh, he's changing up. He's playing off ball. He's screening. He's handling. He's cutting, um, you know, and so really all of them have grown in that. And then the pull up threes haven't been falling at the same rate for him as much this season. He's obviously going to have the ball in his hands a lot just because the offensive hub thing. You guys got him a look in the corner where it was a standstill three. It's, it's tougher to find those for him because he's going to have the ball in his hands. But do you think it's important to make an effort to sort of find him for some of those catch and shoot threes? Or do you think it's just a matter of the floor of the offense? I think it's important to find a way to be uh, a well rounded, effective basketball player and not be defined by one thing. And so um, don't, you're not limited to those shots. I don't think those shots are bad shots. It, it, it's, it's all, it depends on time and score. It depends on what the matchup is. It depends on what our team needs at that time. And that's another area where he's growing is like, just because he's missing some of those doesn't mean that he shouldn't take them. But it also means he's not limited to those. And you're seeing the free throws. You're seeing the catch and shoots. You're seeing the post ups. You're seeing the off ball. Uh, and so it's just not being defined by that. It's being defined by like every game's going to present different challenges. And you've got to be aware to what the challenges are and what the opportunities are. Joe down here. Uh, the team itself is pushing the all-star campaign. We all got little gift boxes here. How much is that a conversation in the locker room, and how much do you think those kind of accolades and those kind of things, especially with five bona fide candidates on the team, how's um, that playing out in the locker room? I don't know. I'm not in the locker room, um, but I trust, the, I trust our guys. I trust the characters. I'm sure they're talking about it. I'm sure there is some level of importance into it. I don't want to diminish um, how important the individual is to the team and the opportunity that they have and the legacy that making an all-star brings. So we shouldn't diminish that at all. So uh, I'm assuming they're talking about it. I'm assuming uh, they want to do it because it is important. And, uh, you know, individual accolades are, are important. And uh, it takes good individuals to be part of the team. And I think all five of them are deserving uh, to be an all-star. So um, they should try that. They should talk about it. They should relish that. They should go after it. But we should do it in a way that uh, highlights everyone and uh, a way that continues to make the team successful. Joe, we did not ask you about Coach of the Month before the game. Sorry about that. Does that mean anything to you? I know Abby. I'm sure Abby did. Um, uh, does that mean anything to you? Do you get a plaque, a certificate? A plaque. Like, what do you get for that? And like, does it mean something to me? Yeah, I, I would probably say um, in the past I probably would have said no, but I think it's a testament to what we're building and what we're creating. And so uh, it's just a testament to the staff. I wish they would change it to staff of the month because I'm not doing it by myself. So I'm not the one controlling the scouts. I'm not the one making the edits. I'm not the one uh, you know, doing the matchups during the game or coming up with lineup suggestions. So that's the entire staff. Um, and then if the, coach, the players don't let me coach them, then I'm not really a good coach. So like, I think it's just a testament to the environment that we're creating. Um, and so, yeah, it does mean something to me because it shows uh, what we're doing is paying off. Joe, you, we I do think they should get rid of the award. You think they should get rid of it? Yes. Or change it to staff of the month. Staff of the month. Yes. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. We're just talking about the zone. Zone something that had bothered this team in the past. It doesn't seem to be as much. Uh, we talked yesterday about the rim protection. We're going a little back and forth, but the rim protection Eight from other teams. After today, yeah, so so that hasn't bothered you maybe quite as much as before. Playing down to a team like this has been a problem in the past. That's not a problem as much right now. What is it about this year's team that's getting them past a lot of these little things that have bothered them in years past? It's a good question. Um, one, I think I'll admit that it may happen at some point, so I don't think it's uh, – like it's something that's not going to happen, you know what I mean? So I don't want to sit here and say like we have it figured out and that we're not going to blow a lead or we're not going to take a team lightly because it's going to happen. I think it has happened in small pockets. I think the difference in this year uh, is the ability to just get out of it quicker. Um, you see it all the time in the NBA, blown leads, difficult times, teams struggle, teams go on, let, let a team go on a 15-0 run or whatever the case may be. And so um, I think we're just not staying in that space longer. Uh, we're just getting, we're just, you know, it's there, we acknowledge it, and we move on as fast as we can. I think that's the key is we want to we want to be perfect. We want to win every single game. We want to win every game that you're supposed to, um, but that's just not how it goes. And so you take a look at some of the examples in the past. Um, the OKC game, we, we battle back. The Philly game at Philly, we battle back. Guys have been out. We plug guys in, and we look the same. Um, the Detroit game, we're losing. We come back, and like you said, when we have leads, we usually do a good job of uh, doing that. So... Um, I think it's just a matter of having the expectation of it's not going to go your way all the time, and when it's not, how quickly can we get back to being our best? Thank you, Joe. Thanks.